Welcome to The Savage Truth with Cicely Davis. I am your host, Cicely Davis. Welcome back, America, to The Savage Truth. Hope you enjoyed your weekend, got to spend some time with friends and family, or hopefully you got to spend some time with yourself, quality time with yourself. Nothing wrong with some self-love. Another quick one today as we stay up on what's happening and what's going on in this great country of ours. As always, I ask that you please like, share, subscribe, and leave a positive review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. I really, truly appreciate that. And let's do this. Well, you've all heard it. O.J. Simpson died. O.J. Simpson died at the age of 76. He died by way of cancer, prostate cancer, apparently. And the media didn't seem to know how to cover this or what to do with that exactly. You really haven't heard a whole lot of buzz. I haven't heard a lot of coverage. I didn't see a whole lot of coverage. I got a few things, but this wasn't covered very well. And I was sitting in a web meeting when it came across my phone um, when it happened and was expecting a lot of coverage on it. But honestly, it's been crickets. Now, to let you know, I'm Generation X, okay? I am quintessential latchkey kid. So I remember all that unfolded. But in case there are some listening and watching, or if you perhaps have forgotten the epic historical events, allow me to give you a recap of the highlights, okay? Now, trial of the century. Now, we all know that OJ was the central figure in what was referred to as the trial of the century. Truly, the former football great who was accused of and ultimately acquitted of the brutal 1994 slayings, slayings, stabbings of ex-wife Nicole Brown Simpson and her friend Ron Goldman, who, by the way, were brutally stabbed to death outside her home in Los Angeles neighborhood of Brentwood. We all remember that. Within days, police announced their intention to arrest the former football star for the murders. Within days. This did not take long. Then, as you recall, those of you who watched these epic events, five days, five days after Nicole and Ron were stabbed on June 12th, five days after the killings, 95 million Americans watched as OJ's white Ford Bronco with longtime friend Al Collings at the wheel and OJ in the back seat with a handgun threatening to supposedly kill himself led police on a 60 mile low speed televised chase through LA that lasted some two hours. This was epic. If you remember this time, it literally took over the airways, took over every television, took over every news media outlet. This was 26 years ago, folks. Time flies. This was 26 years ago, almost three decades. O.J. Simpson ultimately surrendered to police and stood trial for the murders. And in October of 1995, after 11 months from the jury selection to verdict, Simpson was acquitted in a trial that was televised daily and became an international sensation. Absolutely everyone that I know and who they know who knew someone who and then they knew were absolutely obsessed, obsessed with this trial and this case. If you remember, this case split the country, the black community, of course, celebrating and cheering jumping up and down, excited that a black man, a famous, rich, talented black man, got away with murder of not just one, okay, but two white people in America. That's what they were celebrating. You have no idea, truly, the conversations that went on all during and after this trial, not just in my family, but the black community altogether. And I'm sure you all had conversations as well. Everyone had conversations. Again, this was a national obsession. Churches were cheering. Black leaders and black organizations, black celebrities had a ball with this trial and that verdict. Now, as if that wasn't enough, okay, getting away with murder, a double murder, and let me interject here to say and disclose that this is my opinion, right? By all means, OJ was acquitted. So we have to put that out there. But most, 
most share, in my opinion, on this. I know. I, I do know that. As if that wasn't enough drama for a century, okay? 12 years later, <laughs> O.J. Simpson was back at it again. Simpson was arrested in September of 2007 after he led a group of men into a Las Vegas hotel and, and casino to steal at gunpoint what he claims was his own sports memorabilia. Simpson was charged with a number of felony counts, including kidnapping and armed robbery. And then the following year, he was found guilty and sentenced up to 33 three years in prison. He was then released on parole on October 1st of 2017. So the black community sentiment on this was that this was white America, OK, getting back at OJ for Nicole and Ron. And they figured out a way to hold him accountable for their deaths. This was the talk in the black community. This was the talk in black neighborhoods. This was the talk. Um, in black groups and churches all over the place. This was the sentiment altogether. Oh, they found a way to hold him accountable for Nicole and Ron. They got him for those murders. This is just a cover-up. Simpson is survived by four children, Arnell and Jason from his first marriage, and Sidney and Justin from his marriage to Nicole Brown Simpson. So Cato Kalin, if you remember him, he was Nicole Brown Simpson's friend and house guest um, of Simpson at the time of the murder, who became a key witness during that trial, expressed his condolences Thursday to Simpson's children and his love and compassion to the families of Brown Simpson and Goldman. And I quote, Nicole was a beacon of light that burned bright. May we never forget her, he said in a video statement on that he posted on X. The media, like I said, didn't really know what to do with this. They treated him as if he was just some kind of controversial figure, right? Just this one layered controversial figure. The Washington Post wrote in support of this um, sentiment, how will O.J. Simpson be remembered? Well, let me answer that question. As a murderer, as a double murderer, no one talks about his college football days. OK, when you say O.J. Simpson, you don't think about his college football days or how many passes he caught, how many touchdowns he scored, how many yards he gained. Um, you don't talk about his NFL days or his commercials or his movies. They will always, always associate O.J. with his crime, this double murder, this killing, this brutal stabbing Nicole of Nicole till she was almost decapitated and stabbing Ron full of wounds. That's it, period. That's how he will be remembered. That is O.J. Simpson's legacy. Without a doubt, remembering, I have this picture behind me, remembering OJ trying on those gloves, um, making it seem as if they don't fit, holding them up, and the courtroom intensely watching his reaction, watching his face, and him squeezing those gloves on. This is a pivotal moment. And of course, everyone remembering the closing arguments of, and the, the epic, maybe even cliched statement, if it doesn't fit, you must acquit. Right. Everyone remembers where they were during certain um, historical events. And that is forever burned into my memory. Oh, and, and let's not forget, forget that infamous book he wrote. If I did it, <laughs> if I did it, Confessions of the Killer, the controversial book in which Simpson detailed a hypothetical account of how he would have killed his ex-wife. This is unbelievable. This man just messed up literally everything he touched. The book, by the way, has reached the top of the top of two of Amazon's bestseller list days after Simpson's family announced his death from prostate cancer. So right now that book is on Amazon's top um, selling list as we speak. But when we talk about the book, let's remember the victim's families brought a civil case against Simpson, which found him liable for willfully and wrongfully causing the deaths of Ron and Nicole committing battery with malice and oppression. Now, in response to police outrage that Simpson stood to profit from these crimes, HarperCollins canceled the book. Just one year later, federal court judge A. Crystal awarded the Goldman family the rights to If I Did It. Thus began one of the strangest odysseys in publishing history. The Goldman family views the book as his confession, as so many of all of us did as well, 
and has worked hard to ensure that the public will read this book and learn the truth. Well, first and still, my heart goes out to the Brown family and to the Goldman family because of the high, intense scrutiny and depravity of this case. In spite of the obvious, OJ killed two people. He remained to be the focus. But as far as the truth, Mr. Goldman and Brown family, let me just say this. We know the truth. We've always known the truth. Everyone has always known the truth since the unfortunate killings um, of both Nicole and Ron. And about OJ, OJ very obviously murdered two people, was acquitted by a biased and political jury, alleviated of that criminal responsibility. The jury, they were not political leaders, right? They weren't political figures, but they had a political motivation. They were politically motivated. So a wide, vast swath of the population celebrated his acquittal. And this is a definitive moment in America that truly widened the gap between the races in a dramatic and consequential way. And in my opinion, has never truly reverted back, right? We haven't gotten back since this whole um, trial. That gap has never truly closed. We've been escalating, in my opinion, ever since. Think about this, folks. See if you agree with me on this. Between OJ and the election of Obama, the country had become more racially reconciliatory, more racially conscious in ways that has only widened that gap, increased racial tensions with Obama pushing that gap wider in 2010 and 2012. We lost ground from the 1960s and the 1970s to move beyond our terrible, dark history of Jim Crow and our history of racism with this trial. And again, with Obama's presidency, where clearly there was a one-sided view, right? During Jim Crow, there was a one-sided view, one-sided perspective during civil rights as well. And that was white supremacists who discriminated eliminated and treated Black Americans in unspeakable ways as less than and unworthy of respect and dignity and the right to exist as free beings with the equal rights afforded to all other Americans to have and to enjoy life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We fully know that. We fully have acknowledged that, right? This is just a dark time in our history. The whole point of the civil rights movement was to acknowledge the atrocities, learn from it so as to not repeat, take steps to repair the impact and move forward in a country, the freest country in the world, to acknowledge that there were actually two sides to the civil rights movement, not just one. And then to try to actually enforce and meet the terms of the Declaration of Independence that all men are created equal. The O.J. Simpson trial was an overt realization that the notion of equal justice under the law equal justice for all was not just something every American actually wanted. That's what we recognize. When we saw black people, the black community cheering up and down when OJ was acquitted, we just recognized that, you know, not all people really truly want that. And that was just a slap in the face and it was really hard to swallow and accept. The reaction out of black Americans and other non-white demographics really showed that at the heart of this, what was really wanted, what was really desired, was revenge. They didn't truly want that standard to be reached or attained, right? There was an, another agenda. There was something sought here. OJ still owed over $100 million to the two families for the double murders because they won in those civil trials. The evidence against OJ was frankly overwhelming and ir irrefutable. Like I said, for those of you who remember, and I'm sure you agree with me, history is unique because if you were engaged, you remember where you were during certain events, right? That's what makes history stick, at least for me. Remembering certain events or certain facts about the events, extraordinary circumstances, or if I got to participate in it, where I was during that occasion, when, where I was when history was happening. For those older than I, they remember Pearl Harbor, the landing of the moon. This trial for Generation X was one of the signal events in American history, truly. I remember where I was at the time of the announcement of the double murders, seeing Nicole at the base of her sidewalk and the walkway 
in a pool of blood, the Bronco chase, and the constant airing of the trial everywhere you went, everywhere you went that had a TV screen, um, on the radio, in the papers. Yes, this was a time where newspapers still existed. Um, this story was covered constantly, daily, hourly, at every moment, constantly printing the previous day's events of the trial. The two events, Gen Xers, remember our O.J. Simpson trial and 9-11. That's what stands out for me and my generation. During the announcement of the verdict, the racial reaction as reflective of the racial divide was obvious. Non-white celebrating white people in shock. And, and listen, folks, go back, play, put it, you know, Google this, YouTube this, look at, just punch in reaction to the O.J. Simpson trial and just look at the various reactions of different populations and you will see what I'm talking about. It was absolutely devastating, depending on which community you came from or what group you belong to. And that reaction was not just because of justice. It was because everyone knew O.J. was guilty. Literally everyone, 100 percent of the people reacting to this trial knew going in that O.J. was guilty. And so non-whites were surprised, yet exhilarated that he got away with it. Right. They were cheering. They were probably surprised, but they were exhilarated that he actually got away with it. Non-whites, on the other hand, were appalled. No one. I mean, literally no one legitimately thought O.J. was innocent. For non-whites, this was about revenge for the long-standing racial history of America. Ironically, for a man who traveled in white circles, O.J. didn't associate that much with blacks and didn't want to be seen as black. He just wanted to be seen as famous. He didn't live in black neighborhoods. You didn't see O.J. appear at the Soul Train Awards. You didn't see O.J., um, even if he was just in the audience to celebrate other Blacks and their achievements. You didn't see him at Black Image Awards in the audience or as a presenter. He didn't associate with Blacks, yet Blacks were so supportive of him in this trial because he was a symbol. O.J. served as a symbol for Black revenge. After, only after he killed two white people, did his cause become a racial cause. And this is the danger and the deep ignorance of the black monolith, which I've talked about so often. Those racial standards, that racial logic is still in play today, except now we have a lot more whites to help that racial animus along, unfortunately. Listen to the ex post from Mark Lamont Hill, an avid DEI CRT enthusiast. He's a college professor. He's also an activist. And I quote, O.J. Simpson was an abusive liar who abandoned his community long before he killed two people in cold blood. His acquittal for murder was the correct and necessary result of a racist criminal legal system. But he's still a monster, not a martyr. That is so impactful. We got we to gotta unpack this, okay? This is, a, this is an onion I'm going to peel for you here as I talk about the black monolith. Correct and necessary is what he wrote. So, as I stated earlier, the black community knew from the beginning that OJ killed those two people. I'm telling you about the conversations that I had with my family members and my friends the moment this happened, and especially as the evidence was starting to pile up, and we saw him in that on that in that Brocco um, in that highway. I'm telling you about the conversations that were had in black homes and churches and other gather gatherings. The middle of the sentence is really most important, what he wrote. He, had, he was indeed a monster, but still deserves to be acquitted, is essentially what he's saying. So in other words, we know that he was guilty. We know that he killed two people, but his acquittal was necessary because America and its history is racist, right? So we turn our heads on bad behavior. We turn our head on murder. We'll turn our head on crime. But be because it's all justified as black Americans to commit crimes and a low bar standard of behavior because of America's racist history. This is why America will not endure if we maintain this kind and this way of thinking 
that as long as you belong to a particular race, you are abs- absolved of any heinous crime, that you can be acquitted of murder or of another particular race. I mean, let's just put it out there. If you're white, basically is what they're saying. If you're white or perceived as white, because that is who these atrocities aim to take down, white Americans. These are black supremacists speaking up and they're cheering. They were cheering then. They cheer now for the takedown of white Americans. It's an anti-white America. This is widely supported by whites today. This notion, unfortunately, by white liberals, by white socialists who drip in white guilt and seek to ease their own need for attention and accolades as non-racist, inclusive Americans. Here's the savage truth of today. A double murderer is dead at 76 of prostate cancer. He was the figure of an unjust legal system that further divided the races and white liberals today with the O'Biden administration and other various socialist, Marxist, and communist leaders who perpetuate that divide and seek to do so for another four years with the ultimate goal of destroying this country from within. Their pure, unbridled, and transparent hate for America is wrecking our society. That was clear in 1995 at the time of the verdict, and it's clear now today. So the hurt, the frustration, and the anger of the Goldman and the Brown family was all because of O.J. He garnered all of the attention. O.J. got all the attention. He got all the media coverage. He got all the magazine covers. He got all the newspaper headlines. He got all the conversation and talk on radio. Even if he was made butts of jokes by comedians, the whole point is the focus was on O.J. and not their loss of their loved ones. We need to remember not O.J., but the case and what that trial represented and move in the opposite direction. After all, this is how societies are destroyed. This is what's happening in America right now. Ultimately, not by race, but the Marxist movement. And it's focused on race because it's pushing class division, okay? So we need to do this. Let's remember the trial. Again, if you were alive during that time, Maybe reflect back, remember where you were, remember those conversations, maybe watch the movie or a documentary about it, remember the details and how you felt. What were those conversations and what were the feelings that you garnered and what were those conversations you had with family members and friends? How did you feel when that um, verdict was read? Who are you now since that trial? If you don't remember, if you were too young and you don't remember the trial, I invite you to watch documentaries, watch movies, um, ask people who were around what that was like and what it felt like. The coverage was absolutely unbelievable. It truly was and still is, in my opinion, the trial of the century. Let's remember Nicole and let's remember Ron Goldman. And let's also remember so many others who are victims, even if they're not dead, but victims of cancel culture today and how they're victims of this class and Marxist movement. Let's be savage about heading off that agenda and starting to head back towards one another. Please like, share, subscribe, and leave a positive review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. And remember, be bold, be strong, be faithful, be true. Till next time, I'm Cicely. The Savage Truth with Cicely Davis is a production of Front Page Magazine and the David Horowitz Freedom Center. Reproduction of this podcast without express written consent is prohibited.